Hello, this is Mr. White, and this video is on function transformations, specifically translations. This video is going to be a little different than the other ones I've done up till now. Rather than do one or two examples followed by a U-try example, there's going to be 20 exercises scattered throughout this video, and they should be very quick. They actually need to be very quick. It needs to be something you can do without a whole lot of time or effort. So you should be pausing this video frequently and being honest and diligent doing these exercises on your own before continuing to press play and, and revealing the solutions. So under the umbrella of this word transformations, we are referring to translations, reflections, and stretches and shrinks. And in this section of the book, we address all three of them. However, again, this video is only going to be addressing the translations. In the sixth edition of our pre-calculus book, that would be on page 132. So depending on the path you took to get to my class, you may or may not already be somewhat familiar with this, but let me uh, summarize quickly how translations work. So let's say we have a function f of x equals sine of x. Now this should, be, this should, should seem very familiar by now, what I'm about to say. I'm going to say if f of x equals sine of x, then f of blank equals, and this is where you need to say sine of blank. And the implication is that whatever I write in this blank, I will also write in this blank. So if I were to put x minus 5 here, I would also put x minus 5 here. And I would note that that fits the mold of this horizontal translation. I call the horizontal translations and transformations in general, I refer to them as counterintuitive. If you don't know what that means, that means counter to your intuition, opposite of your intuition. And I just realized that I can't talk and spell at the same time. Let me try that again. Counterintuitive. Counter to your intuition. So our intuition tells us when we see a minus 5, it's natural to think Oh, minus 5, if that's left-right motion, that would be to the left. But remember, this is counterintuitive. It actually goes to the right by 5 units. If I had had an x plus 5 in both spots, our intuition thinks of plus 5 as being to the right. But again, this is counterintuitive. A plus 5 would be to the left by 5 units. In contrast, I would say that the vertical transformations in general are intuitive. They are intuitive. So if I erase that x plus 5, and if I just fill it back in with just x, but instead of uh, putting a plus 5, instead of putting a plus 5 inside the parentheses, if I put a plus 5 at the end, and therefore at the end on the right-hand side as well, notice that that now fits the mold of a vertical translation. And like I said, vertical transformations in general are intuitive. So when we see that plus 5 and we're thinking up and down motion, we think, OK, plus 5 is in the up direction. Well, it is. That's what I'm saying is intuitive. It's consistent with our intuition. Likewise, if that plus 5 had been a minus 5, then our intuition tells us that would be in the down direction, and that would be correct in this case. So I hope that quick summary made sense. And if anything I say in this video doesn't make sense, I hope you'll jot it down and come seek clarification. So let's jump into the exercises here. You're being asked to describe the given function as the translation of a basic function. Think about what that means. It means think of what basic function we're dealing with and describe how it has been translated, left, right, up, or down. So if you know what to do, pause the video. In just a moment, I'm going to uh, reveal the solutions. So we look at that first one. And we see a basic function would be y equals x squared. But it would be translated up because we see the plus 7 tagged on at the end. In contrast, exercise number two, we see a plus 7 inside those parentheses. So that means we're dealing with the same basic function, y equals x squared, but we've moved it to the left 7, to the left 7. 
If you're at all curious, why am I saying y equals x squared instead of f of x equals x squared? I'm just mixing it up, just reminding you that we, we can do it either way. All this, these concepts work the same. So exercise number three, we are now dealing with x cubed, but x has been replaced with x minus 3. Therefore, it's moved to the right, translated to the right. Uh, exercise number four, that's our reciprocal function. We have moved it up by five units. Exercise number five, even if you don't remember anything about natural logarithms, you can see the x minus 1 in parentheses and know that it's been moved to the right by a unit of 1, whatever that graph looks like. And likewise, number 6, even if you don't know anything about the sine graph or how, why it looks like a wave, you can be assured that whatever it looks like, it's been moved down 4 units. So in these exercises 1 through 6, we were just dealing with a single translation. The next slide of exercises will have two translations, one in the up-down direction and one in the left-right direction. So pause the video and have at it. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and start revealing the solutions here. We look at uh, number seven. Think of that x plus six in the exponent position. Think of that as being in parentheses. And that would confirm for you or help you see that this is our y equals e to the x. Uh, function moved left 6 and up 1. Number 8, that's our square rooting function. Left 2, down 8. Number 9, I hope it didn't throw you that I put a 1 plus in front instead of doing plus 1 at the end. You know that's the same thing, right? So that would be our absolute value function moved right 3 and up 1. Same thing on number 10. The order should not have confused you, or I hope didn't confuse you. This is our cosine function, right 4, down 3. Number 11. I don't know if you remember uh, me showing in class, or if I even did show in class, that that is an alternate way of writing the greatest integer function. So even if you didn't know that, I hope you could say whatever those weird looking brackets are, it's been moved left 5, up 2. But I'll remind you that that is an alternate way of saying y equals greatest integer of x. And in certain computer programs, I'm thinking of uh, Excel specifically, you would write y, um, you would put floor of x or whatever your input is uh, in an Excel cell. Those all mean the same thing, greatest integer function. Last one, you could rightfully say, Mr. White, Bob of x is not a basic function. And I'd say, yeah, guilty as charged. But whatever Bob of x looks like, I just made that up. I don't even know what it looks like. But whatever it looks like, it's been translated left 1 and down 3. So I hope you're getting the hang of this. The next set of uh, exercises will show you a graph. Well, a couple graphs in this case. And you are being asked to use your knowledge of translations to write the equation for the function in the given graph. So you're going to uh, determine which basic function we're dealing with, determine how it's been moved left, right, up, down, and use your knowledge of transformations to write that function. So pause the video and try this on your own. OK should note that that point that I just marked right here is what used to be at the origin for our cubing function. So that helps you see that it has been moved left 4 and up 2. And this is its solution. Number 14, that's our square root function. It has been moved to the right 1 and up 3. So here is our equation. Get the hang of this? Let's go to our next 2. All right, pause the video. Here come the solutions. Number 15 here, that is our reciprocal function. It has been moved 5 to the right and up 1. If you don't clearly see that, consider the asymptotes, which in the basic function are the x and y axis. But when you draw those asymptotes in there, you, you can see how far they've been moved. And you can, again, see that this is the equation for it. Number 16, that is our familiar parabola, or squaring function. It has been moved 4 to the left, 5 down. 
Two more on the next slide here. Pause the video. Here come the solutions. This is our absolute value function in number 17. It has been moved three to the right and two down. Number 18, that is our square root function again. It has been moved six to the left and two up. Last two. On number 19, this point right here is the one that used to be at the origin. Here come the solutions. That sine wave has been moved three to the left and one down. Uh, and I'll go ahead and point out on that one, if you're wondering, could I have also considered that to be a translation of the cosine function? You absolutely could have. Uh, this is a little bit, of, perhaps a tiny bit advanced for now, but I'm going to write how I could have done that as a cosine function up here and ask you to pause and, and ponder this and see if this makes sense. We could have also written as a translation of the cosine function like that. And I'll actually mention that there is really an infinite number of ways using either sine or cosine that we could have written this as a translation. But I'm going to wait until we get further into trigonometry to expound on that point. Last one here, number 20, that is our cubing function again. And it has been moved 3 to the right, 4 down. There it is. I'll repeat, if anything in this video was not making sense, please be honest with yourself, write it down, come see me during office hours, or ask a friend who, who is getting this stuff. I have one last point to make before I stop. This is going to uh, lead in nicely to the do now that I have for, for your next class. Uh, if we were to look at this as a translation, similar to the last exercise, if we were to look at this as a translation of the squaring function, we would have come up with this equation, f of x equals x plus 4 squared minus 5. Four units to the left, five units down. But you may be wondering, or you may be thinking, that is not the familiar way I'm used to seeing quadratic functions. Could I FOIL that out? Well, sure we could. In fact, let's go ahead and do this x plus 4 squared, remember, please don't break my heart and put x squared plus 4 squared. You need to remember that that's x plus 4 times x plus 4. And if we now FOIL it out, we get x squared plus 8x plus 16 minus 5. We combine our like terms, those constants at the end, and we get f of x can also be written as x squared plus 8x plus 11. The original form that I showed you here, that is what we're going to learn is called vertex form of a parabola. This last result here is what we would call standard form. And if I ask you which one you like better, you may have a selection for that, but I say I like them both. They both have their pluses and minuses. If, I am, if the, the goal is to have a form that shows us very clearly how this has been translated from its basic function, I hope you agree that the vertex form much more clearly shows that this was 4 to the left and 5 down. However, the standard form has its merits, but sometimes we want to switch between them. And you saw that I could very easily switch from vertex to standard form. In your next class, you're going to be asked to go from standard form back to vertex form. So let me ask you to take a moment to study how we went down the list in this process. And in the next class for the do now, whoops, for the do now, you're going to be get asked to go basically in the opposite direction. You're going to be asked to start with standard form and you work your way back up to vertex form. If you take a moment to look at that, that should remind you of a, a process you did when dealing with quadratics back in Algebra 2. I'm not going to name it here. It'll come up in class. But hopefully you, you get the gist of where I'm going with that. Again, if anything didn't make, make any sense here, jot it down, come see me.